Morning, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable uh, week. We are midway for those of us who work the five day week. It's hump day for those of us who work a six day week. We're almost there. Um, whatever it is, I hope that you are experiencing some level of success in accomplishing the things that you desire. Uh, I can tell you from experience that no matter how well planned you are, no matter how much you strategize, no matter how much you invest in learning uh, what it is you need to learn, you will meet those moments where things are uh, challenging, where things don't seem to be working. And I want to talk to you about those moments. I call them my winters. And I'm going to talk to you about that real briefly. But before I do, I want to remind you that... Um, I am currently writing book number 25, uh, something I'm extremely proud of. Uh, it's been an unbelievable journey, uh, a journey that I've embraced that I look forward to. I am nowhere close to being finished. I have so much more I want to share. I'm actually going to be re-releasing book number one into print. Uh, it's It's been uh, out of print, but in digital mode for some time, I'm going to actually put it back into print. And that is, uh, that first book is The Invisible Father, Reversing the Curse of a Fatherless Generation. Uh, I'm going to do that to commemorate book number 25. Another thing that I'm doing for book number 25 is I'm offering sponsorships for anyone who wants to sponsor space in my 25th book. Uh, to celebrate someone, to memorialize someone, to pay tribute to someone, uh, whether they are alive or have transitioned, uh, whether, you know, they're parents, mentors, teachers, uh, it doesn't matter. You can also pay tribute to yourself. I mean, it's I see absolutely nothing wrong with it. I think we don't celebrate ourselves enough. Uh, we wait on someone else to acknowledge what we're doing. And sometimes people don't see it. Sometimes people don't want to see it. Sometimes you've got to be able to encourage yourself. you got to celebrate the moments that you accomplish something. If you've done something and you believe it's noteworthy and you want to pay tribute to it, uh, definitely you can sponsor that. Now, the thing is, I wanted everybody to be able to participate who wanted to participate. So I didn't put a minimum sponsorship on it. You can sponsor 50 cents and your name will go in the book along with your paragraph paying tribute to whoever or whatever you want to pay tribute to. Now, there are ways that you can get a page to yourself. There's a way that you can submit a picture and all that stuff is spelled out in there. But go in the description box where you're watching now, click that link and go sponsor a space. Uh, the book will be published uh, no later than the end of this year. It's definitely uh, something that I'm enjoying writing. It's a, something I'm extremely passionate about. Uh, and you can learn more about that by going and looking and clicking the link. But I wanted to get that out of the way. Now, let's go back to talking about these winters. Uh, see, a lot of times what I see that sort of frustrates me, and I talk about this a lot with my wife, uh, Marion, is I see a lot of people talking about their successes and uh, a lot of people celebrating their current position, a lot of people talking about everything that is going right in their lives. And I, I'm, I'm all for that. I'm happy for anybody that's living in a space that they are satisfied with, happy with, uh, elated with, whatever it is. I'm happy for that. I believe that's something that everyone uh, should experience. My thing is when you are looking at people who are successful and they don't tell you about the winners, they don't tell you about the story behind the glory that they're advertising, I think it does an injustice uh, and a disservice to those who are paying attention because it uh, delivers and presents an illusion that it's just been smooth sailing. It, it presents an illusion that everything was 
copacetic all the way through the process. The truth of the matter is that no, everybody isn't. Nobody is, as a matter of fact, going to have smooth sailing through life. This isn't what life is about. Definitely not when you are attempting to accomplish something of any true value. What When you are attempting to accomplish something that has intrinsic value, that has true value, something that is worthy of your true investment, of your spiritual and, and, and emotional and, and physical investment of time and energy and hard work and, and everything else that's going to go into it, it's going to come with some challenges. It's going to come with some experiences that are not going to be comfortable. Some are going to be downright painful. You're going to experience some setbacks. You're going to experience some disappointments. You're going to experience uh, a delay. Oh, delay definitely is going to be a part of the process. Delay is that thing that tests your resolve. Delay is like, yay, yeah, it ain't coming right now. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to quit? Are you going to fold? Are you going to sit up and whine and complain? Are you going to sit up and point fingers? Or are you going to double down and you're going to reinvest and you're going to stay the course and you're going to see it to the end? See, it's not about what you know as much as it is about how committed you are to finishing. That's what most people don't get. Most people think because I know it, it's going to happen. And then when it doesn't happen to certain things, well, maybe I didn't know it. No, it's not about that. It's about commitment. I'll take a person that doesn't know but commit it before I take the person who knows who's commitment is questionable. I'll take a person whose psychology is right on point about what needs to be done and how focused they are over the person who has the best plan. What I'm telling you is having a good plan is a great thing to have. Don't get me wrong. You want a plan. You want to be able to, with some level of uh, reasonable certainty, be able to predict how things are going to turn out. What I can tell you is those predictions are going to be tested. Those expectations and anticipations are going to be tested. It's not going to always end up where you think it should end. It's not always going to end up at the time frame you think it should end up in. I'm telling you that most of the time, if you're really truly reaching for something, you're going to experience some failures. That's okay. That's a part of the process. Failures are simply feedback on your efforts, on your approach, on your strategies, on your planning. And it, sit, it sends you back to the drawing board to make the necessary changes and adjustments. You're never going to hit. If you're hitting everything that you set out to do on time, you're not stretching yourself. You're not pressing yourself. You're nowhere close to actualizing your full potential. You're playing it safe. That's not where you're going to thrive. That's not where greatness rests. Greatness doesn't rest in safety and security and comfort of playing it safe. Greatness rests in the ability to move beyond the threat of pain, beyond the feeling of fear, beyond the unknown to sit up and say, you know what? I'm coming to get what I say I desire. See, the thing is, you can want it all day long. You don't get what you want. In this life, people talk about all the time. Yeah, you, you can get what no, you don't get what you want, you get who you are, you get what you become. So, in other words, if you become the person who's capable of having what you say you want, then you'll have it. But that means you've got to evolve, that means you've got to develop, that means you've got to put in the work. What I'm trying to tell you is too many of you are quitting. Say, I'm not quitting, I just took no inactivity is a form of quitting. Inactivity says I'm not investing in it right now. Uh, I'm not getting results, so I'm just going to sit it over here and chill. You've quit. You just haven't acknowledged you quit because you don't like the way it sounds. But you've quit. If, you have, if you're not waking up in the morning and putting in the work, you quit. If you're not waking up in the morning evaluating yourself, uh, examining yourself, assessing yourself, taking them intro, taking those introspective uh, looks at yourself and determining what needs to change, what needs to grow, what needs. See, growth should be intentional. Growth shouldn't just be the experience of what's going on in your life, the default experience. No, growth should be intentional. Growth should say, look, this is who I am. If I'm honest with myself, these are my strengths. I'm pretty much middle of the road here, and these are my weaknesses. Well, here's the thing that I do differently than most people. The first thing is I double down on my strengths. I have strengths for a reason. My strengths are what makes me unique. A lot of people are trying to be what other people are naturally. And that's why you really, really struggle is because you're trying to operate in a space because you see other people are great at it and you want to be great at it, but that's not your strength. No, double down on your strengths first. So you enhance, grow, refine your strengths because your strengths are where you you get down your strengths are the focus of your gifts 
and, 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 and what puts you ahead of other people. You want to be at your best in your strength, strengths. Now you start to look at your weaknesses. What do you say? I need to get better at my weaknesses. Well, this is what I do when it comes to getting better at my weaknesses. I don't sit up and go all out and say, I'm going to uh, take a course in organization. I'm going to take a course in taxes. I'm going to take a course. You know what I did? I found out what I was good at. And I did that. That's why I got that. I did that. And then what I did is I found people who were exceptional at what I was weak at. And I said, come on over. I got something I think you'll like. And I convinced them to be a part of what I was doing, even if it meant giving them half ownership into it. It's nothing wrong with that. The thing is, you can't do it all by yourself. The first thing you're going to have to learn, find people who are going in the same direction and get them to join in. But what I did is I found people who were exceptional in the things that I was weak in, invited them in, showed them how they would benefit by working with me. And what I did by being around them, I became better at what I was weak at by simply observing and following suit. It's a natural way of learning. It's much better than sitting out taking a course, getting a certification in something. You're learning it in real time. You're learning it doing something you're passionate about. So your emotional level is going to be high. The more emotionally charged you are about something, the more it it, it, it's anchored in your brain and becomes a part of your permanent memory and easily accessed in your permanent memory because your emotional center is involved. That's why when you go to certain places, they get you emotionally charged before the speaker speaks. Why? Because the heightened, the higher you are emotionally, the more you retain. And they want you to retain it. Why? Because they want you to be successful. Uh, it's important to them. So look, the thing is, I find people that are great at what I'm weak at and I become better at it by simply being around them. Remember, you're going to be the average of the five people you spend the most time around. Find some exceptional people to fill those spaces and then try to find people who are good at things you're not. Why? Because they're going to challenge you to be better while you are challenging them to be better at what you're great at. You're going to balance one another. Those are extremely important things. But let me explain something to you. You can't quit in the winter. See, the winter is the delay. The winner, winner is the first. The winner of the the winner is the nose that you're gonna get from people. The winner is seems like every time you try, you get pushed back two steps. That that's your winner. Your winner is what's going on. But that that's the time you've got to be at work the hardest. You've got to be at work the hardest in your winner. Why? Because your winner is the time that you establish the strength, the fortitude, the momentum. And, and the focus that it's going to take that when the opportunity and the door does open, you're able to seize it because simply having the door open doesn't change anything. Because, see, that's what I call spring. Spring is the window, the window of opportunity. See, when winter leaves, spring comes. But see, just like winter, spring doesn't last forever. That's what a lot, a lot of people see. A lot of people uh, are procrastinating because they think spring lasts forever. Well, I finally got through winter. I made it. Or, you know what? I'm just so happy I'm not in one of them. Oh, that was so hard. That was so terrible. I'm I, I'm just so, so just tired of it. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually just relax for a minute. And the first thing you can do is take a sabbatical from your drive and your grind. Now, your sabbatical comes when you achieve the first goal. You take a day off, a week off. When you achieve that first goal, you get that thing that you've been saying you want. You take that, then you take a day or a week off. You know, me, maybe a day. I don't you know. Some people might say, I take a day and I, I really enjoy it. I take it in. Then I say, I'm back to the ground. Why? Because there's a new goal now. I'm never satisfied with where I'm at. I'm never content with reaching that goal. That goal was just to get me where I'm at. My goal is to grow until I die. My goal is to evolve until I die. My goal is to get better until I die. So once I achieve a goal, it's just, okay, what's the next thing? It's on and on and on. That's how you get from one book to 25 books. It's sit up. You know, one thing is take that on, finish it and then move to the next one. Never get so consumed with what you've done that that becomes your permanent residence because then you don't grow. Some people are still caught up on what they did in high school. Some people are still caught up on what they did in college. I'm not even reveling in what I did last year. I'm focusing on what I'm about to do this year. See, it's 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 about looking ahead, but it's about staying working. See, see, a lot of you are inactive and you haven't admitted it yet, but you quit because the inactivity speaks for itself. You can't be 
in work and not working. So when you're not working, you've quit. You just haven't told nobody yet. So what you got to do is you got to get up and you got to put the work in. And then when you get to spring, when winter is over, that's when you got to seize the opportunity. And the best way to seize the opportunity is have the momentum already bent, so uh, already built and have everything already set. So that way, when the window opens, you move into it and you seize it. And then you take that momentum and thrust yourself forward. That's where those quantum leaps in growth come from, is the momentum built inside the struggle, inside of winter inside the storm see that's where most people are folding at in the storm most people are sitting up saying man i knew this wasn't gonna work i mean i i i i should have knew better oh man this is here look at, i ain't got time for this. no i'm doubling down it doesn't matter how long i take the beautiful thing that i can tell you is that after about 30 plus years of doing this as an adult and i've been doing it long before i reached adulthood i've been just simply doing before i could understand it i was doing it because i was around people who were doing it <coughs> And that's where I learned it. But as an adult, I've been doing this. So what happens is whenever everybody else is sitting up and looking and going, oh, man, I've already learned. Delay does not phase me one bit. People look at man, you've been on this for like two years. You said 90 days. Yeah. But what I learned is the longer it takes for a vision, a dream, a goal to manifest, the more rewarding it is. It always compensates you for your time. Let me explain that to you again. When you put down a goal, you want it to be so real, so huge, so so marvelous that it's worthy of the energy and the effort you put into it. And it also will hold you steady when you start to experience delay, when you start to experience denial or, 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 or potential denial. I always tell people delay isn't denial. Delay doesn't mean denial. It simply means that it has been withheld for a certain period of time and you have to remain focused in order to have it. So many people fold on the dream right before the breakthrough. That's a problem. But what I do is I sit up and say, okay, what I know is while I only intended to invest 90 days, six months or a year, and now I'm moving into two years, three years, and, 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 and I haven't gotten it yet, I know that when it does break through, I will be compensated for my time. The universe is just, oh, God just divine the, designed the universe to do things in such a spectacular way that you sit up and you're sitting up and you're going, wait a minute, man, I've been working on this and everybody's looking at me. Everybody, first of all, stop worrying about what other people are thinking about you pursuing your vision. You are giving too much room and validity to the random opinion of minimal minded people. Because what I can tell you, the people who are really getting on in this world aren't sitting up talking down on you. The people who are getting on this world aren't the ones ridiculing you. The people who are really, truly rising to the occasion aren't ridiculing you. The people who are ridiculing you are the people who haven't been able to get on themselves. They are minimal minded in their thinking. So what they do is find ways to tear other people down so they feel good about themselves. Don't get caught up in that. What you have to do is understand you don't need the permission of, uh, of anyone. You don't have to earn the approbation of anyone. What you need is to believe in yourself, believe in God, believe in your God-given ability and talent, believe in the uniqueness of your strengths, believe that if I set my mind to do it and I apply myself, I can have it. Believe that if I can imagine it in my mind, that's God's evidence that it's possible. And then you set out and you go out into the world and you make it happen. It doesn't necessarily happen when you think it should but if you remain faithful to the purpose to the cause to the goal it will come to fruition and when it comes to fruition it will reward you for every night that you sit up and you were just frustrated every day that you thought it was going to happen and then it faded every day that you sit up and you almost cried or you did cry it's going to reward you for every ounce of pain every setback but you've got to be willing to stand in you've got to be willing to put in the work when i was a young kid my mom made it very clear to me look nobody can question the fact that you are a smart little boy, but let me tell you something, your skin is going to work against you. No matter how much you don't like the sound of that, your skin is going to work against you. And what you're going to have to do is find out that you're going to have to be exceptionally better in your performance and in your work ethic to be able to gain just equal footing with your counterparts. But let me explain something to you. You're built for it. You have what it takes, but you're going to have to put in the work. You're going to have to show up. You're going to have to stay in. See, it's going to be in those moments when everyone else folds that you shine. 
where other people quit, I wouldn't quit. But pe people say, well, okay, you know, you come from this background and you, this is, this is, this is where you come from. How are you in the predict position you're in now? And you're outperforming contemporaries who had a head start. Well, see, there are people who just innately and inherently have head starts in this life. That's the reality of it. Not complaining about it, not wasting a whole lot of time on it. But my reality tells me there were people who got a head start on me right out the gate. There were people that were set up. There were people who were set up with million dollar companies while I'm trying to come up with my first idea. But what I found out is nine times out of 10, if you didn't build it yourself and you don't have a work ethic and it came too easy, the chances are you're not really putting in the work to keep it because it came too easy. And that, so what I look at is, like I tell people all the time, I wake up in the morning smiling. Why? Because I know 90% of the world is too lazy to be on my level. This isn't me being arrogant. This is me being realistic. See, I understand that how I'm going to catch the people who had a head start on me is I'm going to wake up early. While they're sleeping, I'm working. While they're out playing, I'm working. While they're sort of reveling in their head start, I'm working. You know, the, the, the story you learn as a kid, the tortoise and the hare, how the hare was so much faster than the tortoise, but the tortoise won. Why? Because the hare was playing. The hare took their uh, advantage for granted. The hair stood up and instead of putting in the work and finishing the work, the hair is playing around and the TARDIS is putting in the work. The TARDIS is sitting up saying, I'm slow, but I'm moving. And that's the thing you've got to realize that everything won't happen on your timetable, but everything will happen if you stay committed. The whole thing I tell people all the time, it's not how, about how smart I am. It's not about how many resources I have. It's not about who I know. None of that stuff that everybody talks about, it's about none of that. Now, it's great to have all of that, but it's not about none of that. You know what it's about? It's about the fact that I simply will not quit. My one word, and when I define, everybody has a one word, and you got to find out what that word is. When you look at yourself and feel how you operate, what's that one cold word that really anchors you? Some people, their cold word is faith. Some people, their cold word is love. Some people, their cold word is uh you know, consistency. My code word is relentless. It simply means I don't relent. I don't stop. Once I make up in my mind to have it, I'm going to get it or I'm going to die trying. So if I'm alive, I'm still fighting for it. I'm never sitting up and saying, well, I gave it my best shot. Nope. Quitting isn't an option. There's two options on the table. I'm going to get it or I'm going to die. And that's it. That's the way that you got to make up in your mind. You got to stop sitting up thinking life is going to fold for you because you said you want something. It's not going to be whether you want it or not that's going to determine whether you have it. It's going to be how focused and committed you are to putting in the work, to remaining remaining faithful to the work ethic required. You don't get what you want in this life, you get who you become. The things you are able to have in this life will have, you will have it because you became the person able to manifest it and create it. If you don't become the person, you don't get it. No matter how much you speak it, no matter how much you say you want it, you can say all that. But the bottom line is, if you don't want it bad enough to go out and get it, if you haven't set goals high enough to attain the level of existence that's required to have it, it will never be yours. One of my favorite quotes of all time is by Stephen Furtick. Stephen Furtick wrote in his book, Sun Stand Still. He wrote these words towards the beginning of the book. And it just really just like, it's like, yes, this is me from here on out. This is how I feel. This is how I think. He said that if the vision that you have for your life isn't so huge that it intimidates you, it's a good chance it's insulting God. Let me say that again. If the vision that you have for your life isn't so huge that it intimidates you, it's a good chance it's insulting God. What does that, that means that if the vision you don't have, that you have for your life isn't so huge that it wakes you up in the morning with a sense of urgency and an understanding that you're going to have to go out and get up and make something happen today that you don't have time to waste if the vision isn't so huge that when you sit up and you look and you say man this hurts but i'm gonna keep going man i feel weak but i'm gonna keep going if the vision 
isn't so huge that you look at all of the disruptions and the delays and the disappointments and the rolling in of the vicissitudes of life and you say, I'm not stopping. You're insulting God. Why? Because God designed you for greatness. He didn't design you to meander through the maze of mediocrity. God designed you to execute greatness because your greatness is the representation of your God. Your religion doesn't have a whole lot of use in life. But your greatness is a representation of God. It's an execution of your divine nature and your direct connectivity to God. So in essence, the way that I actually, I tell people all the time, all this, you know, do your thing. I don't tell nobody how they should relate to God. I don't tell anybody what religion they should claim. I'm not a religious person. I'm a person that's connected to God. I trust God and I can relate to any person's religion and see their connectivity to God and tell them how to get closer. But you got to let go a lot of the ritualistic stuff within the religion to focus on personal, personal movement and personal development. I tell people time if you know, go to your church, go to your place, do your praise dances, do all that stuff like that. Uh, sing your songs, do all that. But the greatest form of worship, is the execution of one's purpose. You can't worship God any higher than to go out and do what you were designed to do in the first place. We miss that. We're moving through life as we meander through the maze of mediocrity, barely existing, never making an imprint on this world. Most of us will live and die, and the only people that will have known us are our family, and most of them will forget us within 10 years and move on, and nobody will ever know you existed. If you haven't made an imprint in this world and an impact in this world that will speak for you and of you long after you're gone, you have failed the design. I'm challenging you, get up, get off of it and move into what you were designed to do. You should be living at the level of your design. You should not be taking one ounce of your potential to the grave with you. One of my mentors once said, the great Dr. Miles Monroe said that the wealthiest place in this entire world is a cemetery. Why? Because you will find books unwritten, Businesses not started, relationships not cultivated, inventions not explored, and the list goes on. Why? Because people live their entire life and never pursue their purpose. It's not until you discover your purpose that you can explain your pain. You need to understand what you're here for to know why you're going through what you're going through and what you've been through. Start living at the level of your design. For those of you who have trouble getting started, for those of you who have trouble taking action, I have a link in the box that will allow you to work with me directly one-on-one -on -one in what is known as the um, Breaking the Curse of Procrastination Masterclass. Uh, I once did it as a whole master class, but I'm literally offering it now for the same price as the whole class for an individual setting. And just for you, 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 you to aware, this is a fraction of what I charge for for a session with a with a client. My session, my one session charge, one one session fee for a client is three hundred and fifty dollars, and it's worth it. I charge it without blinking. My clients uh, pay way more than that for my platinum packages, which is working me for a year. Uh, and I'm worth it. I, I put in the work. I grow myself daily to be effective. What I do, but I want to work with you. So I've made it extremely affordable for those who want to take action on it. The link is in the box. Also, for those of you who want to sponsor space in book number 25, uh, which I'm writing right now, the link is there. You can sponsor that space, as I said at the beginning of uh, this session that you can sponsor that space and you can literally pay tribute to anybody you want to, uh, grandparents, mothers, spouse, uh, mentors, teachers, 
or you can even celebrate something that you've accomplished yourself. Uh, there's no minimum sponsorship, but there are ways that higher sponsorships can get things. Uh, for instance, you can get your own dedicated page where your sponsorship is that page. Nobody else's name is going to be on it. Or you can even get a picture uh, of the person you want to celebrate it included. Uh, I'm opening this up. This is a part of me celebrating uh, book number 25. Uh, another thing, like I also mentioned, that I'm going to do in commemoration of this being book 25 is I'm going to uh, re-release the print version of my first book, which is um, The Invisible Father, Reversing the Curse of a Fatherless Generation, uh, something that, you know, set everything in motion. Uh, me trying to understand my struggles of not knowing my father as a teenager ignited the research behind that book. Uh, the first article I ever wrote that got published outside of the school, high school that I started writing in uh, was the article that was the precursor to that book. That article was actually published locally and nationally in Teen Magazine, uh, man, some 30 plus years ago, 36, 37, 37 years ago. But, and I've been writing ever since. Uh, ever since. Anyway, uh, this is book number 25. I would love to have all you guys' participation. Like I said, I wanted your participate, so participation so badly that I did not put a minimum on sponsorships. Uh, you, if you sponsor 50, 50 cents, your name's going in the book, you're going to get a paragraph. Uh, I just want people to participate. I want people to be able to put something in a permanent sphere uh, that's important to them and get to see what that feels like. Me personally, I think everybody should write at least one book. You lived a life, you've got a book in you. Uh, and, you know, and the thing is, um, I've just picked up a couple of new authors with my publishing company. I'm just excited about that. So we're going to see how those things go. But anyway, thank you guys for stopping in. As I always say, I live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I will die on E. I challenge you to do the same thing. On that note, I'm out.